Shannon, you got the first proclamation. Not yet. In a moment.
right, good evening, everyone. Today is uh, March the 26th, 2018, the last week of March. There's a little bunny coming around to everybody's house this weekend. Please do not kill the bunny. Code enforcement, animal control, please leave the bunnies through Monday. After Sunday, you can have them. We want to make sure every little child gets their Easter basket and all the eggs. Anyway, uh, please join us in the Pledge of Allegiance if you're in the front or the back, flags in both ends. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Ms. Parker, would you take the roll, please? Atchison. Here. Bird. Here. DeCambra. DeMott. Here. Pinter. Here. Seitz. Scully. Here. All right, thank you, ladies and gentlemen. First item on the agenda will be the consideration of the minutes of the preceding meeting of March the 12th, Ms. Pinter. Yes, I left my microphone on. So I move that the City Council approve the minutes of the meeting of March 12th, 2018, as presented. Is there a second? Second. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor, signify by aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion is carried. Next item up is the Mayor's Challenge for Water Conservation Proclamation. Ms. Bird, if you would, please. Thank you all for being here. Um, I have the privilege of making this uh, proclamation. So whereas the city of Westminster has actively promoted water conservation for residents and businesses over the years via a number of programs and projects, and whereas the city continues to explore ways to manage residential consumption of water and to inspire its residents to care for our state's natural resources, and whereas cities can engage in efforts to inspire their own communities as well as their neighboring cities to become better environmental stewards, and whereas the annual National Mayor's Challenge for Water Conservation presented by the Wyland Foundation and Toyota with support from the U.S. EPA Water Sense, the Toro Company, National League of Cities, Conserva Irrigation, <laughs> Earth Friendly Products, the U.S. Forest Service, and Wonder Grove Learn is a healthy nonprofit competition for cleaner communities and a water use reduction competition between our cities and whereas, with the encouragement of their mayor, residents may register their participation in their city's challenge online by making simple pledges to decrease their water use for the period of one year, <laughs> thereby assisting their city to apply state and federal water conservation strategies and whereas from April 1st through the 30th 2018 the city of Westminster wishes to inspire its residents and its neighboring communities to take the Wyland Mayor's Challenge for Water Conservation by making a series of online pledges at mywaterpledge.com to reduce their impact on the environment and to see immediate savings in their water bill and whereas, last where else, Klaus, this proclamation meets the city's strategic goals of a beautiful, desirable, safe, and environmentally friendly city and a financially sustainable government providing excellence in city services by promoting the sustainable use of the city resources for current and future users. Now, therefore, I, Herb Atchison, uh, Mayor of the City of Westminster, Colorado, on behalf of the entire City Council and staff do hereby proclaim the City of Westminster agrees and supports the Wyland Mayors, agrees with and supports the Wyland Mayors Challenge for Water Conservation and that the program is to be implemented from April 1st through the 30th, 2018 through a series of communication and outreach strategies, whether new or existing, to encourage Westminster residents to take the conservation 
challenge. I urge my fellow citizens to support the Wyland Mayor's challenge for water conservation and pledge to decrease their water usage for the period of one year and make a difference. Oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> that is That's the best proclamation. Idea. Christine Gray, would you like to say a few words about I will, this? I will say that despite the fact that this is a really long proclamation, the pledge is only four questions long, so please feel free to go on and, and take the pledge. It's very easy. It takes 30 seconds. And last year, Westminster's residents pledged to save about 2 million gallons of water. So let's beat that number this year. That's fantastic. Thank so, you so much. Thank you. All right. You. Wonderful. Mr. DeMott will be doing the National Animal Patrol Officer Week proclamation soon. Guys, why don't you come on up? <coughs> Commander, come join us. Go ahead and actually start with letting you guys introduce yourself, and we'll start with the sure, top, I'm I guess. Chief of Police Tim Carlson. I'm Deputy Chief Police Kim Barry. Commander Norman Howard. Well, Animal uh, Management Supervisor Kelly Jellen. Animal Management Officer Veronica Blazewitz. I'm Animal Management Officer Janelle Cook. I'm Animal Management Officer Jonathan Beckett. We're missing one tonight. She went home sick, Chris Brannigan. Well, I have the distinct privilege of getting to read the proclamation for animal management services. I know that anybody who's got to interact with this group, they're a great group of people, who we actually do get quite a bit of calls from them. Even before I was on council, I remember talking to Kelly because I had a neighbor who had a barking dog, and everybody knew I was involved in the city, so they're like, what do we do about a barking dog? I'm like, I don't know. I'm going to call Kelly. So, um, you know, as well as if you ever have an opportunity to go through our Police Citizen Academy, which is going on right now, you get to learn all about what they do in the rest of, of our department. So go ahead and read our pro proclamation here. Um, whereas animal management services provided in our community are an integral part of citizens' lives and whereas support of an understanding and informed citizenry is vital to the <clears throat> efficient operation of animal management and programs concerning the welfare of animals in public, and whereas health, safety, and comfort of this community greatly depends on these services, and whereas the efficiency of qualified and dedicated personnel who staff the animal management unit are material influenced by people's attitude and understanding of the importance of the work they perform. Now, therefore, I, Herb Atchison, Mayor of the City of Westminster, Colorado, on behalf of the entire City Council and staff, do hereby proclaim the week of April 8th through 14th, 2018 as Animal Control Officer Week in the City of Westminster and call upon all citizens and civic or organizations to adequate themselves with the challenges and opportunities involved in providing our animal management services and to recognize the contributions of animal management officers make every day to our health, safety, comfort, and quality of life. Signed this day, 26th day of March 2018. So, Thank you very much for everything you guys Thank you. do. Thank you. Do you have anything you'd like to say beyond that? Um, I just a very hard working unit and um, I respect and I appreciate everything that they do for us in the city. Absolutely. And I will add that their people skills are just as good as their animal skills. Because <laughs> <laughs> they have to deal with both sides of that. And you either mess with somebody's car or mess with their animal, they go crazy. So, Much like a child. Uh, these folks are, are very good, not only with their animal skills, but also with their people skills. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, and I'll take a couple. One, and one, two, three. There we go. Thank you. Oh, there's one more. Oh, yeah, one more. Except for Joe's. Sit down, Joe. <laughs> Thank, you very much. Thank you. Congratulations, guys. Thank you. 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 Thank
Mr. Scully, if you would, Arbor Day Tree City, USA. Yes, sir. May I have Pat McLaughlin come on up? <laughs> and we have some staff members I know as well here tonight. Hi. Hello, I'm Pat McLaughlin. Nice to meet you. Is that Matt McLaughlin? Please stand right here. Yes. <laughs> and face the room. Okay. Yes, they want pictures while we're speaking. Okay. Brian McCoy. Brian McCoy. I do remember reading that on the note, but the note that came to me right before the meeting was just one name. But welcome. So um, tonight we are privileged to have a proclamation for Arbor Day, and we have two gentlemen here with us to help us address it as well. So I'll read the proclamation okay. first, and then we'll have you um, say a few words. So, whereas in 1872, J. Sterling Morton proposed to the Nebraska Board of Agriculture that a special day called Arbor Day be set aside for the planting of trees, and whereas the holiday called Arbor Day is now observed throughout the nation and the world, and whereas trees can reduce the erosion of our precious topsoil by wind and water, cut heating and cooling costs, moderate the temperature, clean the air, produce oxygen, are a source, a source of joy and spiritual renewal and provide habitat for wildlife, and whereas trees in our city increase property values, enhance the economic vitality of business areas, and beautify our community, and whereas Westminster has been recognized as a Tree City USA by the National Arbor Day Foundation and desires to continue its tree planting ways, now therefore I, Her Herb Atchison, Mayor of the City of Westminster, Colorado, on behalf of the entire City Council and staff, do hereby proclaim Saturday, April 21st, 2018, Arbor Day in the city of Westminster and urge all citizens to support efforts to protect our trees and to support our city's urban forestry program and further urge all citizens to plant trees to gladden the hearts and promote the well-being of present and future generations. Signed this day, 26th of March, 2018. Herb Atchison, Mayor. Thank you. Would you like to say something? Yes, I okay. would like to say a few words. First, I'd like to thank the mayor and the council for allowing me to do this presentation here this evening. So thank you. And then, um, and also thank you for your dedication to trees and Tree City USA. Um, my name is Pat McLaughlin. I'm with the Colorado State Forest Service. Westminster is one of the communities we serve. And um, I, I, I'm really happy to be here for the Tree City USA presentation. This is Westminster's 33rd annual Tree City USA Award, 33 years. And this is not an automatic renewal each year. Each year, the Westminster has to apply. And the application comes to the State Forest Service. We send it on to the Arbor Day Foundation in Nebraska City, and they administer the program and make the decisions. There are four standards each community must meet to become eligible for a Tree City USA award each year. One is a tree board or professional tree manager hired by the community. Two is to have a tree ordinance. Three is to have a community forestry budget with a um, community forestry program with an annual budget of at least $2 per capita. And the final requirement, which we've just had tonight, is an Arbor Day observance and proclamation. So really happy to see the support and investment for the tree program here in Westminster. And I'd also like to add that the city of Westminster has gone above and beyond. Um, they also received a growth award from Tree City USA for 2017 for additional work that was done in Westminster, um, sponsoring a pruning workshop where 30 people were trained and, and young trees were pruned in one of the local parks. Um, Brian McCoy was one of the trainers at that workshop. And um, there was also tree climber aerial rescue training that took place over three different days in March. And over 90 firefighters from nine different um, departments were trained during that time to assist with, um, with rescues of tree climbing arborists who, who would be in distress. So um, it's very important that they got this done. And then the city also partnered with a couple of businesses to, um, to recycle wood materials. And so one, one of the businesses was Ben and Stock Playgrounds. 
Um, they're going to do a nature playground at the new Westminster Station um, Park at 68th and Lowell in 2018. And another was Cherry Creek Designs. They're, they're building a table for um, a future open space visitor center. So lots of good things going on here in the city of Westminster with um, trees. And I'd like to present the Tree City USA plaque again this year to Brian McCoy for the city of Westminster. Thank you, Patrick. Thank you. And then I get to present this to you. Ah, <laughs> and then we get our picture taken. Picture. All right. And I can hide my notes with the proclamation. <laughs> okay. okay, I'll take a couple. One, two, three. One, two, three. There we go. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you, you gentlemen. Well, we've had water challenges. We've had animal control. We've had Arbor Day. Now we have Earth Day. Ms. Pinter, if you would, please. All right, is, who is here for Earth Day? All right. Hi. Thank you. Please introduce yourself. Um, I'm Kristen May. I am our Open Space Stewardship Specialist. Hey, thank you, Kristen. Um, Earth Day in Westminster, like a lot of places, has a lot of celebrations. And I'll just read this brief summary, um, and then we'll do the proclamation. Um, over one billion people recognize Earth Day all over the world. Westminster's Earth Day celebration features short presentations, including live animals, animal control will likely be there, beekeeping, local food preparation, and drop-in yoga. Booths are set up to, for more information on these subjects, as well as volunteer opportunities, trail open space, forestry, outdoor nature programming, Stanley Lake, recycling, uh, pollution reduction uh, from the Westminster Envi uh, Environmental Advisory Board, Relief Westminster, and outside agencies, including the EPA, Commuting Solutions, Smart Commute Metro North, Conservation Colorado, Butterfly Pavilion, EnviroWag. I'm not sure what that is. They're actually the company that we um, contract with that cleans up our dog waste from the park oh, and composts it. Oh, that's great. Someone, yeah. so, somebody's got to do it. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> great Outdoors Colorado, Nature Educators, Simply Bulk, Westminster Bee Club, Refill Revolution, Girl Scouts will all have booths. And the schedule includes all of this yoga, seasonal walks, uh, tasty cooking demonstration, live animals, and backyard bees. It's going to be a busy day. Absolutely. All right. So now we get to the whereas part. <laughs> whereas Earth Day is an important date for environmentally conscious citizens all over the world, and whereas the city of Westminster has proven itself to be dedicated to environmental responsibility and sustainability, and whereas Westminster has planned and organized a celebration to bring information, insight, and advice to participants, and whereas the caring citizens of our community are willing to do their part to learn about the various programs available to them. Now, therefore, I, Herb Atchison, Mayor of the City of Westminster, on behalf of the entire City Council and staff, do hereby proclaim April 21st, 2018, Westminster's Earth Day celebration in the City of Westminster and call upon all citizens and civic organizations to join together to learn, participate, and celebrate the efforts being made by residents and the city. Congratulations. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Where should everyone go for these fabulous live animals and bees? It's actually right across the street from City Hall, so at 92nd and Yates, and the event is April 21st, so we're a little less than a month out, um, and starts at 11, and we'll be out there until 3. So we've got food trucks and all kinds of fun things. Um, live animals are actually generally raptors, so those are pretty wow. fun to learn about. Um, the global theme for Earth Day this year is end plastic pollution. So if you're interested in learning how to decrease um, plastic waste in your life, we'll have a ton of different organizations there um, to teach you how. Hey, yeah. great. Thank you so much. Absolutely. <laughs> need to do the picture. Yeah. <laughs> I'll take two. One, two, three. One, two, three. Yeah. Awesome. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thanks. Take care. Well, thank everyone that came out tonight for a lot of these activities that we have going on and the groups that are represented are things that just show the Westminster District continues to be involved in the environmental sustainability of the city and other activities going on. Okay. All right, next item up on our agenda is the uh, consent agenda items uh, 8A. I'm sorry, let me move back too far now. 
citizen communication. This is an area of uh, the council opens up the podium for comments from anybody in the audience for a period of up to five minutes. As normal, the green light comes on at the start of your time. The yellow light tells you you have a minute left, and the red light says your time is up. And again, as a reminder, this is a citizen communication. This is not a time that we engage in a back and forth comment, so these are your time to make comments. I have right now four people signed up to talk, and uh, Miss Ann Holly. Dear Mr. Mayor and City Council, my name is Ann Holly, and I'm here to rep represent the South Westminster Arts Group and discuss the future of the Rodeo Market Building. I understand in this format that you will not be answering any questions. Disappointingly, we have come before you twice and have had no information that we, we have no more information than we did when we first addressed the issue with the city. SWAG has made extensive efforts to address some of the concerns with the city of Westminster claims to have regarding our occupation of the rodeo market building. We now have a full board of directors consisting of seven members. We have also communicated with city employees regarding some of the concerns that have previously been raised by a small group of disgruntled former members. We have heard rumors that the city is considering putting a brew pub in the rodeo market building as a replacement for swag. I have no personal problems with brew pubs. There are at least five within five to 10 minutes of my home. Those pubs are not in residential areas. And if I lived in the residential area surrounding the rodeo market building, I wouldn't want a brew pub there. It would take major renovations to the building and there would be parking issue issues as well. That being said, the original intent of the building was to promote the arts in that neighborhood. I don't think that a brew pub would be support, supportive of that intent. <clears throat> I'm sorry, I'm not accustomed sorry, to speaking in public. <clears throat> the purpose of SWAG is to support the arts and give the artist a place to show their art. Our programming that we do, such as the children's free classes and the events such as our upcoming Kentucky Derby party, which is a fundraiser for us, need a space to take place in. I understand the city believes that nonprofits can run without a building, but if you have regular, ongoing activities, it is extremely difficult, if not impossible, to have those events without a space for them to take place in. If we, had to rent in a if we had to rent a space to have events, the cost would make it incredibly dif difficult to justify having the event. Our members are volunteers, and their purpose for being members is to have a place to display and hopefully sell their art. That is the main reason they join and volunteer in our events. Without that incentive, there is very little reason for them to join, pay their membership dues, and spend their time working on activities. In order for our all-volunteer membership to continue to provide benefits to the community, they need to know there will be an art gallery available to them as a benefit to, of their membership. We have been coming and talking to you with little or no feedback from the city. I believe that the city already has a plan for that building and has had that plan for a long time. The reason stated in the memo that was sent to the city council alleged a number of very minor issues. It is very difficult to believe that those minor issues are the actual motive for kicking us out of the building, <clears throat> which the city has allowed us to use for the last nine years. It appears that the city wants a way to make money regardless of their continued statements that they are committed to supporting the arts. Supporting the arts is not usually a money-making proposition. The historic Westminster Art District is a very small area, basically one little street. It is hard for me to believe that there are other areas in Westminster the city could use to make money. I drove down that street on Saturday, and since the weather was nice, a lot of the business owners were sitting outside and talking with their neighbors. I have half expected to see Floyd the Barber and Andy Taylor strolling down the street. Where in Westminster do you see that kind of environment? Probably no place else. I would like to appeal to you one more time to consider letting SWAG continue to reuse the Rodeo Market building, not because of monetary reasons, but because it is the right thing to do for that neighborhood. After all, as city employees and elected officials, it is your job to do the right thing. 
thank you for the time for your time. One other comment that was not in my speech. Uh, you got you got an email today from Daniel Lancaster who wrote you regarding uh, the Rodeo Market building. Part of that letter is going to be in the Westminster window tomorrow. So, I mean, so I just wanted you to be understand that we're not the only ones that are interested in keeping that building. Thank okay. you. Thank you, ma'am. Christopher Pardo. Electronics. I got gotcha. you. Never, never goes as fast as you want. <laughs> um, Go ahead, Mr. Okay. Park. So it's actually Christopher Pando. My handwriting is atrocious, um, but I'm here uh, in response to an article, news article that I read concerning someone attempting to promote um, breed-specific legislation, uh, dog banning, pit bulling specifically, uh, and just want to speak on behalf of those in the community who are opposed to such legislation. So breed-specific legislation, the enforcement of it, relies on a guilt-by-association methodology that harms responsible dog owners and their innocent dogs. Uh, in an incident, the culprit is never a bad breed of dog. It's an irresponsible dog owner um, and their inability to uh, control their dogs and often the inability of law enforcement to hold those irresponsible owners accountable for the actions of their dogs. Laws should not focus on breed, but rather promote responsible pet ownership and allow for the rapid identification and sanction of those dog owners, dog owners who cause harm in our community. I have a list here of five recommendations from the American Veterinary Medical Association on the type of laws and actions that cities and counties and other governments should focus on in uh, keeping their community safe from, dog, um, from, from dangerous dogs and their irresponsible owners. But number one is the enforcement of dangerous dog laws that do not discriminate on the basis of breed, but rather focuses on bad owners. The city of Westminster already has these laws in place. Uh, enforcement of animal control laws like leash laws by trained responsible offer officers. We had those fine people sitting over here earlier today. Westminster has these laws and has those people. Uh, prohibition and the aggressive prosecution of dog fighting. Uh, Westminster does this already. Uh, laws requiring or encouraging the neutering of dogs that were not meant for breeding. And of course, education programs for kids and adults alike on what it means to be a responsible pet owner. Uh, Westminster as a city is already taking uh, most of the recommended steps in keeping us safe from uh, irresponsible dog owners and their dangerous dogs. And I just wanted to speak on behalf of those people who would be opposed to such legislation. That's it. Thanks. Thank you, sir. Mr. Colmer. Good afternoon, uh, city council members. Uh, Mr. Herb Atchinson, I don't know sure how, how to say your name. Atchinson, I'm sorry. That doesn't matter. That's not Hungarian. <laughs> I, 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 I'm not jealous of you because you have to take care of the earth, you have to take care of the water, you have to take care of the tree, and you have to take care of the, take care of the animals, and you have to take care of herbs. So, <laughs> well, I just thought, you know, it's a large job. But what I am here, uh, last time I talked about the uh, graph on the spending of uh, Colorado, and uh, they spend each year $1 billion more, and that's a Colorado thing what I uh, passed out, graph. And I looked at the graph. All things are going up except what the government should do. The rest is a charity. Uh, when the government looks at the charity and that's a main job, they forget the real job. I'm off it. Uh, so I wonder um, how you will run the city that wise, or it will be different. Um, there is uh, education. I have to pay for other people's education, kids' education. I have high education. I have to pay for other kids' high education. I pay my own in the private school, and they are doing fine. Uh, and uh, healthcare, I don't know why I should give somebody's, somebody else my money, especially when it comes to abortion. 
should not be forced, it is, it is unconstitutional. Uh, and it goes to human services, and, uh, and it goes on and on until it gets a flat thing, what the government should really do. With other words, without this chart charitable work, the government would not be in debt. And I wonder if you could bear on your mind that's when you make a, be a budget. Uh, number one is a road like right now in the Colorado and at 20 the capital. They made a nice bill. They thought they could give, I think it was about, about $250 million for the roads yearly, yearly. But some union guy from the education came out, you cannot do this. Our children will suffer, which means the union will suffer. <laughs> and uh, forget the road. Now they have a problem with the para. Uh, I just thought I would like to know, you know, if you really look at this thing and you would uh, consider this graph. Um, well, and the education, the most money, what they make higher and higher spending is a bureaucrat paid, superintendent, lo lovable uh, retirement. I don't know if it is a $1 million uh, superintendent do one year. And uh, other thing I would like to bring up, the bike roads. Uh, I would just like to see that you would not put these big, wide bicycle uh, road beside the regular road because it makes a regular road narrower, more accident. And when I have to turn, there's a bicycle coming, I might not see a bang. When I have to turn, I go the bicycle side so I couldn't make a turn without bothering anybody. So somebody might be in the front of me at the intersection. I don't think it is a very good idea. I just wonder if you could uh, look, um, think it over because I already saw these um, bike sides on the road. Uh, last one is, is it beautiful? That's Denver. Okay. That is a gray town. Tasteless. Terrible. There is some very nice colors. Look at that. Beautiful. I just show you. Uh, that means when they call, talk about the earth color and things like this, I really question why we have to have an earth color, brown, gray, black. It looks like a cemetery. I don't like it. A uh, little art could be put in it. Uh, in some place, they do it wonderful. I think I finished up. Well, thank you very much for listening. Thank you, sir. Ms. Boutwell? Hi, and good evening. Um, I just have a few more words to say about swag. Um, I just wanted to let you guys know that, you know, it's an important part of the city. And we have been an important part for the city for nine years now. Um, and I know for sure the last two years, we have done the Orchard Festival, which is a great in our community. It's going to be very well missed. And I know I've seen a lot of you at this Orchard Festival. It's a great program that we have, and we are being funded by part of it by FCFD, because we do do FC, FCFD every year. That is one of our programs, and a fundraiser on top of that. And that helps pay for mostly the sculpture garden, because we haven't seen any money from the city, and that was supposed to be part of your part of, of that deal was that, you know, you guys were going to pay some money by getting the, the sculptures, at least try to sell the sculptures, and we were to get 20% so we could grow that program. Well, that hasn't happened in the last two years, and the only reason it hasn't happened is because now the people that were supposed to be purchasing those units are now putting money in a slush fund and they're not having to purchase the sculptures. So the last two years, 
our group has paid for the other half of that sculpture garden through our fundraisers, okay? So I just want you guys to be aware of that. And it's, you know, that, that was a program that was supposed to be set up that we, that you would get if a contractor, you know, won the contract for a certain thing. They were obligated to buy a sculpture for that facility that they would be working on. And 20% of that was supposed to go back to us. And not to us, to the sculpture garden. That was part of your program. That's how you were paying for it also. But we're paying for it now. And it costs us a lot of money. And our volunteers are the ones that are keeping that sculpture garden going. And I don't think you're being fair to, to us on a lot of different things. And so I'm, I have a lot of concerns about that. And, you know, if we go away, I'm not sure what's going to happen with the sculpture garden. And that's another sad part because that looks very nice in that neighborhood. And that's really about all I have to say about that. So I hope you let us stay at the rodeo market. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Is there anyone else in the audience who did not remember to sign up that has an item that they'd like to bring to council at this time? If not, report of city officials, Mr. Tripp. Thank you, Mayor. I have three things that I'll just briefly dis discuss here. One is, is that uh, I know, Council, you're aware of this, but for people who are listening to the meeting tonight and people who are here today, um, yeah, about uh, Wednesday of last week, we posted online the city's first collective bargaining agreement with the local uh, 2889 uh, representatives of the firefighters here in Westminster. Uh, we've completed our negotiation uh, and conversation of interest-based bargaining with them. Uh, their union has ratified uh, the collective bargaining agreement, it'll, it'll be coming before you for action, council members. But this is really just to make sure the, the, comp, the community knows that that agreement is online and available for their review and for their comment. Uh, secondly, uh, our website has a really interesting addition in the last few months called the Cone Zone. And I mentioned it because um, we've, been, we've been in the midst of an extremely important project at the 104th Avenue for the replacement of the water line there. Just this last weekend, we completed that intersection at Sheridan 104th. I know that many people have been waiting for that project to be done, as we have been. We've had uh, two or three things happen that were unanticipated. When you get into that kind of underground construction, some things happen that uh, you just can't account for. But we fortunately had funds and the right people to um, deliver a great project. The project will be completed in about uh, 60 days uh, with paving ex expected uh, in May. Uh, it's been great work. We've got the finest drinking water in the state of Colorado, and we intend to maintain that with the replacement, the timely replacement of our drinking water. But the Cone Zone is a place that you can find out about all these kinds of projects. I looked on, on it this evening, and there's a list of actually about 23 different capital projects that are happening in this city right now uh, that are disruptive to traffic and neighborhoods uh, and all, but they're investments in our future. So I did, I, if you have questions about uh, those projects, you can find it on our website. And finally, uh, tonight is the last meeting of, of one of our colleagues um, that we're going to miss greatly. Um, it's hard to believe she's only been here three years, but our, our Deputy City Attorney, Karen Stevens, uh, will be leaving us uh, shortly after this evening. Um, she has had I have to tell you, for a person that's been in an organization about three years, more impact than anybody I've ever seen in that sort of a tenure. We're going to miss Karen a lot. She's a very bright person who's brought a wealth of local government experience to us. We were so fortunate to have her move over and uh, be our deputy for the last three years. And we, we wish she'd do it for another 33, but that's not in the cards. Uh, we wish her well in her future endeavors. But I just wanted to say on behalf of the staff on my side of the table, uh, we're going to miss you a lot, Karen. Thank you so much for your service. That's it. Any comments from the council at this time? Mr. DeMott? <clears throat> yeah, I had a couple events that I'd like to share with everybody. One is this Wednesday is the um, Westminster Fire Department and Sea Fire's Green Chili Cook-Off. That will um, kick off at 6 p.m. and go till about 8. It's at the Westminster Promenade. That's a great event. Um, and they use that money to go towards the burn fund that they raise at that event. And you get to try 
multitude of different green chilies that are made by different firefighter groups. Um, I will be one of the judges at that, so I'm looking forward to that event. Um, if you can't make that and you still want to support the fire department and see fire, next Friday, not this coming, but next, April 6th, is Sonic Night from 5 to 8. 10% of whatever you buy for dinner that night will go to see fire, which goes to support our fire department. And the last thing I wanted to do was give a, a shout out to the parks department. I went and uh, was able to participate at the adult Easter egg hunt this Saturday at Walnut Creek with the mayor. It was a fantastic event. I can't imagine the amount of time that they must have put in to put it on. I think that I heard there was over 6,000 different eggs put out. Um, there was a bonnet contest with over 70 applicants that put in for it. It was a lot of fun to get to be a part of and I wanted to make sure that they got some kudos for doing such a great job with that event. Ms. Scully. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I just wanted to also cover a few things that I had the privilege of being a part of in the last week. And one of them was I had the privilege of being at the Jeff West meeting on Friday morning where the Stanley Lake High School kids presented um, Day Without Hate. And I wanted to encourage all of my fellow Westminster citizens to wear white t-shirts on Friday, April 27th to celebrate Day Without Hate. It was a response to the Virginia Tech shootings. And I think it's a great message of um, solving violence and bullying in our schools to remind everyone that um, it, it really means being kind to one another and respectful. And then also, um, my hat is off to my Missing in Action counselor sites tonight. Um, she is very actively working on Start by Believing campaign and um, last Friday many of my council members joined me and an opportunity to go and do a video clip for the Start by Believing campaign and we have many events coming up starting on Monday, April 9th and I think they, they might actually start a little bit before that but um, April 9th is the big one. We'll have a big kickoff at Front Range and then we'll also do one here at the City Hall and um, I also wanted to plug the Westminster Police Citizens Academy. I've been partaking in it and what an amazing, amazing event for our city. I, I encourage everyone to apply and commit to it and learn about our police department. They are truly amazing and they, our safety is their priority and they put their lives on the line every day for us and I can't thank them enough um, because I, I've learned a lot about how hard their jobs are. And Karen, we will very much miss you, but Good luck to you. Ms. Bird. So um, on Friday, um, I was invited by one of our citizens to go and um, attend um, a Persian folk concert, which was the first time I had ever attended an event like this. And um, I have to tell you, I didn't understand any of the lyrics um, that, that this lady was singing, but the instruments and the music were unbelievable. The costumes, the, the pageantry um, were wonderful, and it was just so much fun to see people of such a, a much different culture um, performing music from all over the country of Iran. And the lady, um, her name is Sima Bina. Let me just, I know I wrote this down before I started. Um, at any rate, so apparently she is a legend in Iran and um, has taken folklore from all parts of the country and, um, and all of these songs, some of them forgotten by current generations and pulled them all together. So anyway, um, for me, I think what I wanted to impart to you sitting here tonight is um, really an encouragement to go try something different. Our neighbors come from all over the world. This is one of the great things about our city. We have so many people from diverse backgrounds, diverse cultures. They bring so much to the city of Westminster, and this is one of the reasons I love Westminster. So get to know your neighbors. Um, get invited to some of their events, and go check it out. You might not understand what they're saying, but I will tell you, uh, music is an international language. So, so that was one. And then the very next day, um, I joined with my daughter in um, the March for Our Lives. Uh, rally on Saturday. And um, I have to tell you, I was so moved by this event. Um, it's, it's so heartening to see young people speaking up, um, speaking up and demanding more from their leadership. And um, I think something must be going on correctly in people's homes and in our schools where students are learning 
that if things in your world don't seem just, they don't seem right, that every one of us has an opportunity to use our voice to advocate for better. And um, I think all of us adults um, should be heartened by seeing this. I know that I have so much faith and um, belief in a better future for, for all of us because of the leadership I saw of our kids. So anyway, it was wonderful, and um, I think they demonstrated a universal value that we would all like to see our children be able to attend public schools, any schools, any event really, um, free and safe of violence of any kind. So anyway, hats off to those kids as well. Ms. Spencer? Yeah, um, we uh, really had a full week uh, in Westminster and in Colorado. Uh, there is a pledge uh, for the Westminster Start by Believing. You can find the links on our website. And so if anyone out in the audience um, wants or listening wants to take that pledge, it's a really great way to show your solidarity with uh, other members of our community. Um, I also had the opportunity uh, this week uh, to get involved and do a lot of really great community outreach. And one of my favorites was uh, a panel that we did out in the community at Town Hall on uh, issues related to growth and smart growth and conservation and just really engaging conversations. And if you're out and you didn't get a chance to come to that community meeting, there will be others, please let us know because at the city it really matters what you guys are thinking about topics related to affordable housing, transportation, smart growth, density, and environmentalism and how those all intersect. So please uh, keep your comments coming and thank you so much. Any other comments from council? If you're not, if you would, bear with me a minute, Joe. You can come up for a second. All right, I just wanted to clarify something before I shoot my mouth off. Uh, this question about breed-specific ordinances, and not only has this come up locally, but I've been getting contacted nationally that we're doing something. Let me be very clear. Based on the advice of our city attorney, from our police department, from our code enforcement groups, we are not contemplating, and we published this in the local newspaper, we are not con contemplating the creation of any breed specific ordinances. The ordinances, as Mr. Pando uh, testified on earlier, we believe we have plenty of strength in what we have in order to control this issue. And so if it will help by us saying it publicly, again, although we published it, this continues to seek to come up. So let me reiterate, we have sufficient ordinances on our books today for the police department, for our city attorney's office, and for code enforcement to deal with this type of an issue that we are not contemplating a breed-specific ordinance. But thank you for bringing it again. A couple of things I would ask. If you have family members, relatives, friends, who are members of the armed forces that served during the Vietnam era, there's an opportunity for that group, and they are encouraging anyone from that era to attend for a meeting with Congressman Perlmutter this coming Wednesday at 4.30 at the Adams 12 op Ed Center at 1500 East 128th Avenue in Thornton. So if you have family members, friends, anybody who served in the military during that period of time, they're encouraged to attend the meeting with Congressman Perlmutter because he's continuing to look at legislation of how we make sure that our service members who are returning from whatever period of time that were involved in the conflict are receiving the services they need. Uh, this is not only from the Vietnam, from World War II, Korean conflict, all the way through today, we still have service members who are not receiving the care they need when they return, either from wounds or from mental issues. So if you have an opportunity, pass the word, have your people or friends show up and meet with a congressman this Wednesday. On uh, Friday night, the city, in conjunction with the Westminster Chamber, will be holding a uh, con joint meeting where we will be recognizing businesses who have been operating in the city of Westminster some for as many as 50 years. So if you have the opportunity, that will be at the Westminster Chamber of Commerce at the NOAA's Event Center, and through the Chamber of Commerce website, you can register and buy tickets for that. So again, this is an opportunity for us to recognize people who have spent a good part of their lives operating businesses here in the city. 
So if you have an opportunity, please stop by. Any other comments from council? All right, let's move on. Next item on the agenda will be item 8A. If I can get it back up again. There we go. The consent agenda, which is a set of routine matters to be authorized by a single motion and vote. We have already reviewed the items on the consent agenda with the council. No council member has requested that any item be removed. So at this point, Ms. Scully, if you would. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the City Council adopt the consent, consent agenda items 8A through 8B. Mr. DeMont. Second. Do you have a motion and a second? Is there any uh, discussion? If not, this is a vote by your lights. If you would, please go ahead and vote. Okay, motion carries on a 5-0 vote. Next item on the agenda will be item nine. We have no appointments or resignations tonight. First piece of business for the city council tonight is first reading of council bill number 14. Ms. Bird, if you will, please. I move to pass councilor's bill number 14 on first reading by amending title 11, chapter two, to change the definition of family care home to allow for the care of up to six children in a home child care setting, thereby aligning this city code provision with state of Colorado regulations. Mr. DeMont? Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion by council? Ms. Scully? Uh, no, sir. No. Okay. Ms. Pinter, did you have a question? Yeah, I just wanted to uh, thank Shannon and Councilor Bird for uh, bringing this up and uh, really uh, finding a way to make sure that our code was in line with the state. So thank you for doing that. Ms. Bird, do you have comments? Well, so I'm getting special credit, but um, I shouldn't. We had a citizen, um, a very lovely lady, who um, provides in-home child care and um, thought to reach out to city council, and I'm glad she did. Um, this is the power of local elected government. Um, reach out to your council members if you're having a challenge. But um, she had pointed out to us how our codes aren't in conformance with what the state permits, and that this is was um, creating a hardship for people who were looking for child care close to their homes here in the city of Westminster and also um, creating a hardship for those who um, rely upon this type of work for their income. So at any rate, um, I, hats off to Ms. Hoover who brought this to our attention and I'm happy to be voting on this this evening. Any other comments, Mr. DeMont? I just real quickly actually would like to thank Councillor Bird also. I remember the meeting I was sitting in before I was on council when this came forward from that resident. And I still think you deserve some credit for having the foresight to listen to something that really actually benefits both the person who is taking care of the children as well as the people whose children it is. And I think this is a great move for the city. So thank you for doing that. Any other comments? This is a roll call vote. Ms. Parker. Atchison. Yes. Bird. Yes. DeMott. Yes. Pinter. Yes. Scully. Yes. Okay. Motion carries on a 5 0 vote. Next item up is Councilor's Bill number 15. As soon as I can get it back. There we go. Ms. Scully, if you would, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to pass Councilor's Bill number 15 on first reading, authorizing the city manager to execute and implement an economic development agreement with Ball Aerospace and Technologies Corporation that would include 60% in rebates for building permit fees, use taxes on construction materials, and sales and use taxes on expenditures for furniture fixtures and equipment for five years with assistance capped at $1,488. Ms. Pinter. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion on this item? Ladies and gentlemen, let me remind those in the audience, this is another relocation of a major piece of work. Over 280 new employees coming in. Average income is about 116,000. That's primary jobs coming to Westminster. And it's another large incorporation from Ball Aerospace as they continue to grow to become one of our largest or they already are one of our largest employers in the city. So we appreciate their uh, confidence in us that they continue to bring these opportunities and we will continue to look for more opportunities with Ball and others to bring major pieces of work and employment to the city of Westminster as we are on this motion. Ms. Bird, get a comment? Yes, um, so I wanted to mention um, this, I I'm so excited about this um, 
deal that we are working out with Ball, um, one of the, I, I say, larger strategic objectives um, of council that we've been working on is trying to diversify our local economy and make sure that um, we don't, we're not just a suburb that has um, all retail. I think that's kind of been a staple of most um, suburbs here in the Denver metro area, but that we also have employers where, you know, if you want to work a professional job, you can get those jobs here in Westminster as well. You don't need to be commuting outside of our city. So here we have great shopping, but then also hard to make sure that we have a diverse range of really good employment opportunities for our citizens as well. So um, I'm really happy about this. Um, hats off to our staff who worked hard to make this happen. Thank you. Um, this is great for our local economy and for our citizens who want to work here in Westminster. Mr. DeMont. Um, I just real quickly want to thank John Hall and his team. If people have been paying attention to what's been going on, like my colleagues have said, um, this is the second big aerospace thing since I've been on council in the short amount of time. And if you pay attention to business, a lot of businesses like to go to the same city where there are like businesses. And I think that's very, very exciting for the city of Westminster that we're getting these sort of businesses coming to the city because hopefully that we can expect to see more of this kind of business. Any other comments from council? If not, this is a roll call vote. Ms. Parker? Bird. Yes. DeMott. Yes. Pinter. Yes. Scully. Yes. Atchison. Yes. Motion carries on a 5 0 vote. Next item is Councilor's Bill number 16. Ms. Scully. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to pass Councilor's Bill number 16 on first reading, providing for a supplemental appropriation of funds to the 2017 budget of the General General Water Utility Capital Project Pre Reserve, Wastewater, Fleet Maintenance, ca General Capital Outlay Replacement, Sales and Use Tax, Parks, Open Space and Trails, and General Capital Improvement Funds. Mr. DeMont. The second, is there any discussion by Council on this? Item on Council Bill number 16. Seeing none, this is also a roll call vote. Ms. Parker? DeMont? Yes. Pinter? Yes. Scully? Yes. Atchison? Yes. Bird? Yes. Need one more, guys. There we go. All right, now we got it. Motion carries on a 5 0 vote. Next item on the agenda is resolution number 11. Ms. Bird. I move to adopt resolution number 11, authorizing the reallocation of $442,880 from the general fund contingency account into the 2017 fire department operating budget and the 2017 parks, recreation, libraries, department operating budget. Ms. Scully. I second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion by council? Seeing none, this is a roll call vote. Ms. Parker. Pinter. Yes. Scully. Yes. Atchison. Yes. Bird. Yes. DeMott. Yes. Motion carries on a 5-0 vote. Okay, the next item up is resolution number 12. Council. Ms. Scully. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to adopt resolution number 12, authorizing the city manager to execute the First Amendment to the intergovernmental cooperation agreements between the City of Westminster, the Westminster Economic Development Authority, and the 144th Avenue General Improvement District in, substanti in substantially the same form as presented to Council. That provides for the City to contract for the construction of public improvements in the North Huron Urban Renewal Area and for WIDA and the district to provide revenue to fund construction of public improvements and for other services the city provides. Ms. Bird? Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion by council? Yes. All right, seeing none, this is a roll call vote. Scully? Ms. Parker? Yes. Okay. Atchison? Yes. Bird? Yes. DeMott? Yes. Pinter? Yes. Motion carries on a 5 0 vote. Next item up is Resolution number 13, Council, Ms. Gully. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to adopt resolution number 13, amending the City Council rules and regulations. Ms. Bird? Second. Okay. Is there any comments or questions by Council? Mr. DeMott? <clears throat> yeah, I have a couple comments, actually. So when this came before us to try to decide about some changes, 
some of them I'm generally in favor of. One being the start time moving to 7 o'clock. I was in favor of that. Um, one of the original recommendations was to limit the meeting time, which I had general concerns about that, as we often have um, groups of people who bring out-of-state um, people as part of their teams, and we have long hearings. And I don't like the idea of possibly cutting that hearing short and then sending their people off and asking them to come back in two weeks. Um, one thing that was a comfort to me in that, though, was they gave us the ability to extend meetings 30 minutes at a time by supermajority. We stripped that out in this recommendation or in this uh, what we're going to vote on here tonight and made it so that it's a simple majority. Um, I do not like that. I think that it's important for every person. One of the things that was mentioned was oftentimes when meetings go late, people get fatigued and maybe they're not making the best decisions. So that means that the majority gets to decide if each of us are in a position where we feel good enough to continue on or not. Um, the last thing that I did not really care for in this when I really was originally in favor of was limiting our comment time to 10 minutes. Um, I understand the intent of it and I think maybe it's good intentioned, but I think it does take away individual voices who are each put here by the voters in order to voice different things. And oftentimes that may be the only place where you get to talk about public things um, that you think are important to the city. Um, I would last bring up a quote of somebody that I would have probably never quoted before and I think it's proof of we all can find some common ground on different things. And Larry Flynn said, the majority rule only works when considering individual rights because you can't have five wolves and one sheep voting on what to have for supper. So I think that taking away an individual's right or ability to do some different business, I think is, is not good practice for us. And I don't like that it possibly takes voice away from each of us in different circumstances. And that's why we'll be voting, voting no on this. Okay, Ms. Burr. I would just like to clarify um, the rule that we um, are are passing uh, or voting on this evening, rather, um, that limits council comment to 10 minutes each. Um, I know that I'm in support of that because I want to make sure that council comments are concise and that um, we give our public the opportunity to fully participate in all of council business. Um, we just we would like to preserve the public's opportunity to be here for the reasons that they came. And also, I'd like to just remind everybody that um, stand or sitting here at the dais isn't the only way that council members can communicate what they think is important to um, our citizens in the audience and our citizens at large. There are many different opportunities um, to do it in a way that's respectful of our public and respectful of our public's time when they choose to come and um, attend city council meetings. Other comments? In the event that this uh, resolution is passed, just so the public is very clear, that starting in April at the first council meeting, the schedule, what you would see is the council meetings will start at 7 p.m. versus 7.30. And that if anything goes beyond a four-hour meeting, that requires an extension of the majority of council in 30-minute increments. I think we've tried to uh, alleviate some concern about someone being here with a group that could be a long night but we try not to send anybody away, especially if they've traveled from out of town or they're paying people to be here, such as attorneys or other professional witnesses. So we will do our utmost to make sure that those people are on the first part of the agenda. Staff has, uh, has already been trying to do that to make sure that those important pieces are there. And if it's something that has to be carried over, it will be something we hope will not be detrimental to either an applicant or to a city function that needs to be. If it is, then we will continue to do those 30 minute increment add-ons until we get the appropriate business of that night taken care of. Any other comments from the staff or the city? Okay, again, this is a roll call vote. And as soon as I can get it all up. Come on, there we go. Ms. Parker, go ahead. Atchison. Yes. Bird. Yes. DeMott. No. Pinter. Yes. Scully. Yes. Okay, the motion carries on a four to one vote. And ladies and gentlemen, as far as the city council is concerned, that conducts uh, all the business we had scheduled for tonight, but we will reconvene at this moment as the Westminster Economic Development Authority Board of Directors. There are two items on the, sorry, there are three items on the piece, as well as the consideration of the minutes of the preceding meeting. Mr. DeMott, if you would please on the minutes. 
Mr. Chairman, I move that the board approve the minutes of the meeting of February 26, 2018 as presented. Ms. Scully. I second. I have a motion and a second. All the members of the board who are in favor of this, please signify by aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Minutes are approved. At this point, I will ask if there is any comments from the staff in regards to the budget amendment of the Westminster Economic Development Authority as presented. No, sir. No comments. Okay, any comments from counts, the board of directors? Ms. Bender, you have a comment? Okay. At this point, I will open up the public hearing to anyone in the audience who has any comments they'd like to bring forward at this time on the proposed uh, budget amendment to the Westminster Economic Development Authority. Seeing none, I will close the public hearing and ask the board to move for resolution number 185. Ms. Pinter. I move to adopt resolution number 185, authorizing the supplemental appropriation to the 2017 Westminster Economic Development Authority budget. Ms. Scully. I second. I have a motion and a second for the motion of the adoption of resolution number 185. This is a comment, if there are any from the board. Seeing none, this is a roll call vote. Ms. Parker, if you would, please. Bird. Yes. DeMont. Yes. Pinter. Yes. Scully. Yes. Atchison. Yes. Motion carries on a 5-0 vote. Next item on the agenda is resolution number 186. Ms. Bird. I move to adopt resolution number 186, authorizing the executive director to execute the First Amendment to intergovernmental cooperation agreements between the City of Westminster, the Westminster Economic Development Authority, and the 144th Avenue General Improvement District, substantially the same form as presented to Council, that provides for the City to contract for the construction of public improvements in the North Huron Urban Renewal Area, and for WIDA and the District to provide revenue to fund construction of public improvements and for other services the City provides. Ms. Pinter. Second. Okay, I have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion by any member of the board? Hearing none, this is a roll call vote. Ms. Parker, if you would, please. DeMott. Yes. Pinter. Yes. Scully. Yes. Atchison. Yes. Bird. Yes. The motion carries on a 5-0 vote. Ladies and gentlemen, that concludes the business of the Westminster Economic Development Authority at this time. We will reconvene now as the 144th Avenue GID, General Improvement District Board. At this time, I would entertain a motion for the minutes of the preceding meeting. Mr. DeMott. Mr. Chairman, I move that the board approve the minutes of the meeting of October 9th, 2017 as presented. Ms. Scully. I second. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor signify by aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion is carried. First item on the agenda for the GID agenda tonight is resolution number 16. Ms. Bird. I move to adopt resolution number 16, authorizing the executive director to execute the First Amendment to intergovernmental agreement, intergovernmental cooperation agreements between the City of Westminster, the Westminster Economic Development Authority, and the 144th Avenue General Improvement District in substantially the same form as presented to Council that provides for the city to contract for the construction of public improvements in the North Huron Urban Renewal Area and for WIDA and the district to provide revenue to fund construction of public improvements and for other services the city provides. Ms. Pinter. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any member of the board that has any comments? Seeing none, this again is a roll call vote. Ms. Parker. Pinter. Yes. Scully. Yes. Atchison. Yes. Bird. Yes. DeMond. Yes. And the motion passes on a 5-0 vote. Members of the authority of both the WIDA and the GID, that concludes all business scheduled before us tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, it's approximately 8.40. I'll give you about five minutes if you need to take a bio break or a quick pause, and then we will reconvene as the Westminster City Council in an executive session. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for attending tonight.